It's the Mixed Martial Arts Hour with... The Mixed Martial Arts Hour back in your life on this Monday, June 27, 2016. Hello again, everyone. I'm Ariel Hawani inside our New York City studio. Great to be back doing the show, doing the show this week with a heavy heart. Uh, Late last night, we found out that former UFC fighter and proud Canadian Ryan Jimmo tragically passed away in what police are calling a hit and run accident. Not a lot of details, but uh, just horrendous news and goes without saying that our our, our thoughts and our our heart is out with his family right now because uh, that, that is just horrendous. Um, great guy. Uh, you know, remember him fighting at UFC 149. What a great debut that was against Anthony Proche. What a great post-fight celebration that was. Uh, just tragic news and, and hopefully um, whoever was responsible for this disgusting act will be uh, brought to justice. But for now, we just wanted to you know mention the passing of Ryan Jimmo and say that we are we are certainly thinking about him uh, on this Monday morning so we do this show with a heavy heart um, there is of course as always in MMA a lot to discuss we have a loaded lineup this week and uh, we've got a lot of fun guests so let's get right into it uh, 410 we're going to be joined by Michael Chandler he is stopping by big win for him on Friday in Bellator. At 2.45, we're going to talk to Mickey Gall in studio. Mickey Gall is going to be joining us in studio, talk about his fight against CM Punk at UFC 203. Our own Chuck Mindenhall at 2.25 will stop by. He was in St. Louis for Bellator Dynamite 2. Talk to him about that. 2.05, TJ Dillashaw will stop by to talk about his fight against Rafael Sunsau at UFC 200. Sage Northcutt stops by to talk about his fight at UFC 200 as well. And at 125, we'll talk to Wonderboy Thompson about his big win over Roy McDonald last week. But first, let us go to the phone lines and welcome in my good friend, a man who was victorious on Friday in St. Louis, had a big win over Satoshi Ishii. The one and only Rampage Jackson is on the line. Quentin, how are you? I'm good, man. How you doing, man? How you doing? I'm doing great. Congratulations on the win. Um, uh, you know, nice to get back on the winning track. Nice to get back in the cage. But overall, now that you've had, you know, two and a half days or so to digest it, were you happy with the fight? Were you happy with your performance? No, man. I'm going be, to I'm be honest, man. Like, I, I just watched the fight oh. uh, last night at my mama's house when I, when I got home to Memphis. And, you know, you know me. I'm never happy with, with my performance if, if it's not a super exciting fight. That fight was nothing more than a damn chess match. You know, I you know I don't like to study my opponents and stuff like that. I I, I like the um, the part of fighting where I got to figure out my opponent. But but I just I just wish that other fighters shared the same uh, uh, level of intensity and excitement of of, of exciting the, the fans as I did. You know, but I'm not taking anything away from each, even though I I don't respect him for the way he fought. But you know, he he fought a smart fight. It was really smart. He he uh, stayed uh, away from me at the right times, and he, and he crowded me and got super close to me at the right times. And I watched him like, man, this dude really studied me, and he fought it like a real smart fight. So if you say he fought a smart fight, why don't you respect him? Isn't the point to fight uh, a smart fight? But well, I don't respect him because like the like fans don't really care. Uh, you know, so most of the most fans don't really care about like MMA. We didn't we didn't. Like we 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 blew up, right? We get we like more po- popular than boxing because, you know, in the beginning of MMA, two guys got locked in a cage and they went out there, went toe to toe, and to see who martial art was better and who uh, which and which warrior was better that day. It was about it was about fighting and stuff like that. So, you know, I know he I know he's a judo gold medalist and that's his strong point, which I, I understand it. But I, I, after the fight, they showed him I showed him kicking. They saw him kicking Fujita in the head, punching Fujita. So he knows how to throw punches and stuff like that. You know, it's just like, you know, he just wanted that that win. And and and, and sometimes guys they just want that W that they don't they don't care how they get it. But but me, I, w- I want the W, but I want to do it excitingly. Mm. So I want the fans, I want the fans to to feel like they got their money worth when they pay for their ticket to sit down in there. Or they some fans travel to the to the to the place to get a hotel. They buying beer. They pay. I want them to say, you know what? I got my money's worth for this fight. You don't want fans to, to walk away and sound like, man, that main event sucks. So. Okay, so so you talked afterwards about ring rust. This has become a hot topic in MMA because Dominic Cruz keeps saying that ring rust doesn't 
doesn't you know mean anything, that it doesn't exist. And you said it's a real thing, that it affected you. Did you feel off because it had been, you know, 14 or so months since your last fight? Did you actually feel that in the cage like you weren't yourself? Well, I can understand how, how he said ring rest really don't uh, affect it because it's all, honestly, it's all mental. Mm. You know what I'm saying? If, you, if you're mentally strong and you feel like, oh, ring, ring rust is not going to affect me, then it shouldn't. But, you know, I, 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 I would like to think that I'm a mentally strong person, but I, I feel like sometimes it, it can affect you. It has affected me before, like when I fought... Uh, Marvin Eastman, I had like a little ring rust, and I noticed that that uh, and I had the UFC jitters as well. But I noticed that uh, the second round, you know, what I'm saying I was good. And same thing with this, like the first round, I felt like I was uh, a little rusty. Like my body had to remember all my reaction stuff had to remember. Like I could tell in, in training camp, but not, but but it was my fault. But not only did I not fight for a, 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 a year, I didn't train for a year, man. All I did, <laughs> all I did was 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 stay home and play video games. And, and drink beers and back then I had a girlfriend before before you screwed that up and I was just humping on my girlfriend all the time that's all I did I was humping on my girlfriend playing video games not training and that, and that, and that made me even more rusty because I wasn't training it's my own fault okay. I really enjoyed humping my girlfriend when I had one <laughs> But but so th- this is on you though you, you're you owning up to this this is your fault that you were not yeah. training yeah it is it is my fault because you know my team was in England and this is before I started training with Tiki, so I really didn't have people to train with. That's back when I had my own gym, and you know, people at my gym they were just like normal gym goers. There wasn't any fighters or anything at my gym, and it was a, some little guys there. So I, I was trying to train with them, but it was like uh, it wasn't the same. So I just played video games and and humped on my ex girlfriend, the, the 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 beautiful one, the real sure. nice that used to clean my room and give me a bath and all that stuff. After the win, may, I was wondering if maybe she reached out. She's like, you know. You're 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 famous again. People love you again. Did she? <laughs> nothing. Nothing. I blocked her. I, I blocked what? her. I blocked her now. I'm, Why I'm, would you block I'm, her? Cause, cause you know, it, it ended kind of bad because she was crying because I wasn't in love with her. And you know, I'm an alpha man. I can't take that shit. Man. Like, <laughs> so look at you, bl- you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, uh, we got in a big argument and stuff like that. And and I just and she told me delete my number. I said, well, fuck you. I'm gonna block it too. And, and, oh. and I, I, I think about that. And and I and I miss her, man. So, man, I'm serious. I'm gonna come to New York, man. You gotta find me a girlfriend. Can I call uh, her? Can I try to fix this? Can I maybe you know extend an olive branch on your behalf? Yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe you can. But look, what, but what do you think about the fight, though? I I know you 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 know you're a big fan. What do you sure. think about the fight? Uh, like a lot of people thought it was very controversial. Yeah. And uh, I thought I thought I I did just enough to win. I know just I, enough. I, I know I won by a hair. Because you know I, I'll be honest. If, if somebody beat me. Then you know I, I give it up. Like like when I when I fought Ninja before I saw the fight, I I thought he beat me at that at, at at that moment. I thought he beat me. So then I went back and watched, and I saw maybe how how just one I heard like these fights can go either way. What, what was your take on the fight? Okay, well well I I think and I respect the fact that you say that you won by hair because I think the score of thirty to twenty seven for you was crazy. I mean he won the first round. You you would agree with that, right? Right, yeah. Okay, he won the first round. I thought the second round was close. I thought you won the third. It was super close. If I'm being honest, uh, I thought you looked a little out of shape. I mean, you, you were you were rocking the dad bod, right? A little, a little, uh, a little big well, around I, the belly. I, I, uh, okay, you want okay, you want to go there? Oh, listen, Matt. <laughs> Let's be. Honest. How much did you weigh in that fight? I probably weighed about two forty. Wow, really? Wow, so you were you were a true heavyweight in that fight. Yeah, man. I got you know I got down to two twenty five. And uh, I thought it was, I thought the catch was two fifteen, and then they had a weigh in. They're like, no, it's a two twenty five. I don't think Ishi could make it. I don't know. I don't think Ishi wanted to make two fifteen. And, oh, wow. and it was going to be it was going it was going to be a good it was going to be a good cut for me. So they made two twenty five or whatever, and I, and I rehydrated back up to like two four. That's the biggest I ever been in, in a fight. I had the dead bod going and everything, but you know, so I, I trained I trained my ass off. My cardio was great. I trained my ass off, but you know. um I, I probably shouldn't say this, but I was I was probably like two eighty at the beginning of camp. You wow, know, I was big, man. Wow, I was big. I was there. I was 
I was big, and so you talk about my dad bod, man. I'm a dad, man. You know, what I'm saying? dad bods are in. That's what true. Kind of, what kind of bod? What kind of bod? You, you like a hairy stick figure? You want to talk shit about me? No, no. You I mean, my dad. I, I, I thought I, we was cool, and you talk, <laughs> and you talk about my, my damn belly, man. But but I mean, I'm used to seeing a cut rampage at 205. Can you even make 205 at this stage of your career? Do you have the motivation? Do you have what it takes to make that cut, or do you think that you should be fighting at heavyweight, or maybe a new weight class they can make for you, like a cruiserweight, a 225, or something like that? I would love I would love a cruiser weight at 225, but this is the thing I don't know uh, if I can make 205 uh, again. Or not. I'm going like when I go back home to California after I leave Memphis, uh, I'll be back in the gym on Monday. Okay. But this is the thing I haven't really shared this with anybody. But uh, you know I, I've been diagnosed with uh, an unactive uh, thyroid. I think it runs in my family. Oh wow! And so uh, yeah, so I, I've been I've been um, dealing with this for like like a year. I found like a year ago I've been keeping it. Uh, no, kind of to myself, and it, it kind of it kind of bummed me out, and uh, and so uh, I've been, and so if I don't stay on top of it, you know, I, I gain weight really fast, and that's what's been going on because I've, I've been noticing after my fights, I've just been gaining more weight faster, faster. I figured, I didn't know what was going on, so I went to the doctor and got you know all my blood work and everything done. He said he said my thyroid is not acting right, so I guess I got to take medication for the rest of my life. I've been trying to look for some type of um, herb or something. Supplements or something that, that help. I think I got to uh, change my lifestyle and change the way I, I eat and stuff like that. Then maybe I can make 205. But a lot of people did it. Like when they got a little older, they went to um to like Randy Couture did it. He went up to heavyweight when he got a little older because it's harder to lose weight and stuff like that. But I don't really want to fight the real big boys and stuff like that because I noticed that uh, I tried to pick Ishi up at the end of the. <laughs> at the end of the fight, I'm like I, I was trying to go for a slam or something. I'm like, oh man, this dude too big, man. What? He 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 felt like he had put some bricks in his ass or something. <laughs> I don't know if, it, if if it's his judo background or what. And I was like, man, maybe I do need to take my ugly ass back down to 205. Well, now I feel like an a hole even commenting on your weight. I didn't know that you were dealing with that. I feel like I was set I up. To... Well, I didn't say. I didn't say. No, I didn't. You know, I try to keep most stuff private. Yeah. So I didn't. I haven't really uh, told a lot of people. And I've been dealing with it for for like a, a year. I guess it's probably. I probably had the problem for a couple of years, and I just didn't know. Well, it was so hard for me to lose weight because I used to lose weight real easy to then the doctor told me about my thyroid. So I'm on this medicine that I can't even pronounce. I got to take it every morning on an empty stomach. And then he just told me now that he got to up my dose because he tested me before my fight. And he, and he thought I wasn't taking my pills. I said, I take my pills every day. He said, oh, well, I got to put you on stronger uh, prescription. Wow. So that's, what I, so that's what I've been That's what I've been dealing with. Uh, will it affect your fighting? Like, like, Do you think this can actually cut your career short? No, no, it won't okay. affect my fighting. Um, my coach Tiki looked it up and he said, the "Only thing is, only, only sound effect that it really has is it makes my body ache." So, uh -huh. so when I'm training and stuff like that, I have like little aches and stuff like that. But you know, I'm a soldier. I, I train through sure. that. I've been training through injuries and stuff like for you know for the last eight years of my career. So, is that why? I mean. Did you feel, for, for, again, from an outsider's perspective, because you asked me about the fight, it felt like you were a little flat-footed as far as your attack is concerned. Like you weren't as spry on your feet. Is that is that an accurate assessment of the fight? Yeah, you know what? I was I was really um, cautious because of I, I just knew that uh, his his judo was dangerous, and uh, I, I I just I just didn't want to get too too uh, overzealous and and, and and move around. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, I so I, I was just, I was just, I just really wanted to win. I wanted my first fight back in the year to to, to win. Like most of ring rust is in your head because I, I was like, you know, I didn't want to make a mistake, and, and especially after he like dominated me on on the first round. The last thing I want to do is jump in there and get taken down, and he, and he just hold me down. Right. It, it's really hard to fight somebody that's not fighting. This to just have a, a certain agenda to just hold you hold you down and and run out the clock. So you just got to be really smart and try your best not not to get in those bad positions. Now, what was it like being back in Bellator? Because obviously you went through that whole thing. Like, did you feel like you were home? Did you feel welcome? Was it awkward at all? What was it like for you? Man, to be honest, man, this is my first time, like, working with uh, Scott Coker fighting for him and everything. And, man, they, they took care of me. And I have to say, they, they, they this, this, this fight, they took care of me better than Pride and, and UFC. And, wow. Uh, Combine. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. I, it seemed like you know they were just happy to have me back. Water was on the bridge, and it was a very positive uh, environment and stuff like that. So you know, I, I was happy. They could have. They could have um, 
They could have sent some girls to my room after my fight, stuff like that. But you know, they you know, they did their thing. But that they should have sent a couple of those ring girls or some. They could have. They could have. <laughs> yeah, I had a little after party. You know, that would have been nice if they would have like had you know sent like a a, a a whole like harem of of women for me. You know, so I can just you know have some some girls at the after party to dance with and and you know and hang out with. But you know, everything else was good. That's the only thing that. That they, that they didn't do real real shit, man. They that, that was good. It was good. So I, I figured like maybe maybe it's up to me to get my own harem. Well, I I was picturing your after party. I wanted to know if at you know thirty eight years old you're still doing the after party thing. You just turned thirty eight, by the way, last week. So happy birthday again to you. Belated oh, happy you. birthday. Um, yeah, I pictured you. just you, you and Tiki in the room, just eating pizza, maybe playing some video games. I mean, are, are we really going all out like we dude, used to? Dude, man. Age ain't nothing but no for me, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm a big kid, man. I, ain't, I don't think I'm ever gonna change. I probably, I probably do. You know, be that old dude in the club. You know what I'm saying? Trying to pick up on 25 year old girls. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I do get tired of drinking and stuff sometimes. But you know, I'm here in Memphis. My family throwing a barbecue and stuff for me today and oh, yeah. like that. So I know, I'm, I know, I'm be doing some, some drinking and stuff. And I gotta, you know, I gotta go out and, and, and experience the nightlife. I'm the type of guy when I go on travel and stuff like that, different countries, different cities. I'm what I'm going to do is I'm not going to go take a whole bunch of pictures and sightseeing and stuff like that. I'm going to, you know, I want to see the people and stuff like that. Then I want to check out the nightlife. I don't know why why I'm that way, but I just like it. I like kicking back with the music, having a few drinks, you no know, dancing, you know what I'm saying, a little bit. That's what I like. Uh, how's the St. Louis nightlife? Oh, man. Uh, St. Louis was lit, man. You know oh. what I'm saying? It was lit, yeah. Wow. Yeah, uh, I... I have I had the uh, company called uh, Lion uh, Lion Forge. They they wanted to do my comic book. They took care of the after party, man. They man they popped bottles, man. They they had it going on, man. I, he took care of me. I ain't, I ain't had to I ain't had to come out of my pocket, which I was willing to, because huh. I don't mind the nightlife. But man, I'm telling you, man, they showed me their town, man. They from there, so they're like, yeah, man, this is what we gonna do, and, man. It was it was pretty lit, man. It was pretty lit. I noticed in the post fight interview that you said. I'm coming back fast, taking a short break, and then I'm going to be back. I mean, how fast are we talking here? Well, I I, I want to get back in there. Uh, I, I want to get back there in there soon. But I, what I want to do now is I want to like I want to take like a maybe like another like at least eight weeks, ten weeks to get back in shape. I want I want to come in with some abs, and I want to oh. get back in shape and get, and get back in. There. I do want some. I do want some abs, man. I want to get them abs. I miss my abs, man. I miss. I, I want to bring sexy back. I do. So I want to get some time. To, to do that, I just and I just want to get back in. I want I want to get back in there right away. We talking any opponents yet? Who do who do you have in mind? Man, I really don't have a whole, a whole lot of people in mind. But Matt Matron seems like he want he want to fight me. He has been wanting to fight me sure for a while. Yeah. Then then um you know saying I, I I don't know you know I I want I want to fight Tiz. I heard they signed Tiz. I do want to fight Tiz just to set him up. But it, you know at this point I will fight anybody. You know some people have been talking about me fighting Fedor. He's my friend stuff like that. But you know what I'm saying? If, if if it works, you know what I'm saying? It, it works, man. Are you really you know, friends, I, though? I, Are you really friends? Yeah, me and Fedor, even though we don't speak the same language, man, we friends. I, I stay making him laugh. You know, it's hard to make uh, Fedor. He, he don't change his facial expression at all, but, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't even know if he even understands what I be saying, but he get around me, he be smiling and stuff like that. Fedor is one of the most gentlest giants you ever want to meet. I got the uh, most respect for him, but... You know, sometimes you know the fans probably need to see fights like that. Me and him, we both passed our prime. We're going to be honest. We we're, we're we're older and stuff like that. And those are the type of fights that maybe you know, saying um, Bellator and stuff should put on. Like when guys get over a certain age, maybe we should fight each other. And sometimes not always fight like the young up and coming hungry guys. And that's sure. where you get more uh, exciting fights. Um, I need to be a promoter, man. I need to start promoting some fights, man. I would, man. If I'm trying to tell you, if I was a promoter, man. I would be putting on the. I think I would be the best matchmaker. I'd be putting on the most exciting fights because, because you know, take nothing away from Bellator is cool, but I wouldn't put a fighter like me against fighters like Ishii and guys who who going to be fighting scared. He even said that he was scared, man. Fedor wouldn't be scared with me. Matt Matt Matron wouldn't be scared to to fight me. Those would be like stand up wars. But I think I think I I think I'd get uh, Matron like like uh, in a, the first round because y'all saw him get dropped. I don't know how he even got out of that. I don't even know how he got out of that first round. He man, he he was lucky, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, and Fedor, Fedor, he fought uh, uh, Fabio Mababo, and Mababo, you know what I'm saying? Surprise, shocked the world. So I'm judging this stuff off, off that. Like I think with those two exciting fights and Titties, I would just destroy Titties 
and and I I will I will speed bag his titties while I'm kicking his ass. Oh, you know again with this? Doing like that. Please, please, no Tito you. fight. Please, no Tito fight. I don't want to see that. I said Tito, not Tito. No, but I, I'm just I, saying because I, I know this Tito thing came up on Friday all of a sudden out of nowhere. I mean, I feel like we've kind of been there, done that. Let's move on from that. I know Tito don't Tito don't want to fight me. Me and Tito are still great friends. Yeah, I'm yeah. Saying. Tito don't want to fight me. I don't want to fight Tito. And once I heard Tito hurt his neck and stuff like that, I couldn't possibly go out there with the full intent of power and stuff and punch yeah, Tito yeah. in his jaw with with me thinking like there's any chance I can uh, uh, that I can hurt his neck. You know what I'm saying? So I really don't want to. I really don't want to fight Tito. But what I would like to do though, I would like to do like a um, wrestling and grappling match with Tito because he he submitted me a few times back when we were training with triangle choke and stuff like that. Oh, and I I haven't had a chance to submit him, and I've been working a lot on my ground so. I kind of want to pay him back. I would do something like that, but I don't really want to fight. You know, but then I kind of want that. And then, you know, um, Bellator got that kickboxing and stuff like that. Oh, you want that? Yeah, man. I like stand-up. I might want to do some kickboxing. I really want to do some boxing. Like, there's, there's a lot of stuff out there that I can do. There's a lot of good fights out there that, that, that um, we can do. When's the last time but you I threw a kick a in a fight? Serious question. Okay, okay. What did you say? I was just wondering. After, after this, I got to ask you a serious question <laughs> after you ask this one. What did you say? When's the last time you threw a kick in a fight? Um, when I fought uh, Fabio Mababo, my last fight in the UFC. Oh, right, right, right. That was a while ago. Yeah. Yeah, you know, listen, noticing I kicked him because he, that was my last fight before this last fight. <laughs> well, I've been out for a year. The reason why, well, listen, the reason why I don't throw kicks and stuff in, in the fights is because people are desperately trying to take me down. And I'm not, and I'm not the best, I'm not the best on my back. So when you're really good at jiu-jitsu and stuff like that, it don't matter if people take you down and stuff like that. Me, like, like sometimes I get taken down and I can get stuck there for like two minutes and, I look like I'm losing the round. I, you know, they don't. I can keep people from doing a lot of damage. Like if you notice, when he took me down, he couldn't really do a whole lot. But you know what I'm saying? I ain't just the best. I ain't just the best on the ground. So, so I don't want. I don't want to throw a kick and and get jeopardized. People just laying laying on top of me and, and humping me. Sometimes referees don't don't stand. Don't just be standing you up. Like everybody can't be real great referees. Like John McCarthy and and, and Herb Dean. Like you know. Those guys, they understand. They understand. They know when to send people. All referees, they, I don't know what they be thinking. Like, like if, like this last fight, if it was Pride, uh, Satoshi would have got like at least three uh, yellow cards. That's I don't know. He's st- Japanese. <laughs> they might, you know, they might be like nepotism and stuff over there. What do you want to ask me? He probably gave me. The, he probably they probably gave me the yellow cards because he stole it. No. What do you want to ask me? I got so many yellow cards, huh? What do you want? What do you want to ask me? Okay, look, this one I you know I'm starting my own production uh, company. Yes, yes, right? you told me that. And I'm, I'm gonna start making movies and stuff, and I, and I want to put a lot of MMA uh, people in the movies. I got this great idea for uh, for an MMA movie. I, I'm not gonna do the MMA movie first because they're so cliche MMA fight, sure. the MMA movie. But I really want to do it. I got a great idea that I, I, I this movie I wrote, and I want and I want to. Uh, I'm thinking about putting uh, Al- Alistair Overeem oh. in there, and I want and I want I want you to. I would like for you to. To be the move, so with, like if I, if I wow. got a good role and stuff, would you do some movies with me? Wow, this is a real offer like, coming from you. This is a yeah, genuine. Yeah, real offer. Like, play, in the MMA movie, I gotta have a big. No, I mean Harry <laughs> Hawani. Wow. Well, I'll tell you what, I would be honored. Uh, I'll put you in touch with my agent if you can. You know, if it makes dollars, it makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Hold on, 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 hold on. Did you just big shot me, motherfucker? Did you? Did you, just, did you I thought we were boys. Like, do do I put you in touch with my agent when you want to do an interview with me? All right, next time you want to do a motherfucking interview, motherfucker, you gonna be talking to my agent, you fucking asshole. I, can't uh, I thought we was fucking. I thought we were being friends. You just go big time. I just if it you makes know, dollars, it makes sense. You've heard that before, yeah, right? Motherfucker, you go get yeah, motherfucker, you go get paid. But yo, hey, when you go, you, you get your agent a fucking percentage of, of something that means you can just hatch out, motherfucker. Okay, fair enough. I'm in. What's my role? I want to. I want to expand my horizons a bit. Like I want to be a fighter, maybe not just because if I if I'm an interviewer, then I'm typecast. Why can't I be the fighter? You know what I mean? Dude, dude, we don't got no tampon <laughs> weight class, motherfucker. <laughs> you being a tampon weight class. <laughs> Look at that. Ain't no weight class for you. We can uh, pay. We, uh, you, you do you do good work. Or, you know, being yourself is easy. To, it's just easy to, to, to be yourself, you know. Okay, saying? fair enough. You know, if I get the MMA movie, that I got a perfect role for you in the MMA movie. If if we can talk about it, you could probably be a manager oh. or some sort. Then I have to be like some slimy guy. Don't make me a promoter or manager. I want nothing to do with those people. Well, be... Well, 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 you know, be yourself. You know, okay. we gonna have to because I don't want to say too much about my idea for my movie. Cause, okay. 
because no one has ever made a uh, MMA movie like this the way I, I imagine it. So I want to keep that a uh, secret. And I really want to do this this MMA movie, but um, we got, I got a lot of different projects um, in mind. But I want to put a uh, I want to put a lot of MMA fighters and a lot of a couple other people and stuff, a couple of my uh, uh, you know active friends and stuff. And I just make, I just want to make dope movies, like cool action comedies and just dope ass movies. And this MMA movie will be off the chart. Okay, I'm in. Let's talk. Let's talk All offline, right. as they say. Uh, for now, uh, that don't, don't big time. Don't. <laughs> I won't. I won't. Uh, we got to run. I appreciate the time, Quentin. Congratulations on the win. I appreciate you, you most importantly being honest with your with your assessment of the fight. And I look forward to seeing you back. And I look forward to seeing the abs back because, I mean, I was searching for them and I couldn't quite find them. So... Your mama. <laughs> Much love, Quentin. Thank you. Congratulations. All right. All right. Take care, brother. Okay. There he is. Rampage Jackson stopping by. Uh, congratulations to him. <laughs> nice win over <laughs> Shi Ishii.